Hello to all. We are going to speak today about the pulmonary mechanics. The pulmonary mechanics include the processes of what? The processes of inspiration and expiration. First of all, and before we are going to speak about how the inspiration occurs and how does the expiration occurs. We have to understand, we have to understand some important basics of physics. Some important basics of physics. Those are those are the general law of flow. As you see here from this equation, and as it's clear that the flow, the flow of, of course, the flow of gases, flow of liquids and whatever, uh, this equation is called the general law of flow. The flow equals to delta P on the resistance. Delta P represents the change in the pressure change or differences in the pressures between two areas area of high pressure of gas to area of low pressure of gas and r represent what represent the resistance it is true for the gases it's true for the gases that the gas can move or flow from area of high pressure to area of low pressure. So this is the first physics principle we have to understand. It is called the general, the general law of flow. The second important principle of physics we have to understand is what is called Boyle's law. Boyle's law states that in case of constancy in temperature, or in other words, when the temperature is constant, when the temperature is constant, the pressure of gases, pressure of mixture of gases or one gas on the wall of the container is negatively proportional to the to the what? To the volume of the container. In other words, the Boyle's law states that the pressure equals to one on volume. In other words, if we have some amount of a gas, and this gas is put in what? In a container. In a container. So of course the molecules of the gas, of that gas, will cause what? Will cause pressure on the wall of the container. But if the same amount or the same volume of gas is put in another container, in larger container, so of course the pressure that is caused by, that is caused by the molecules of gas on the wall of the container will be less will be lesser than on the container of smaller size. This is called the Boyle's law. So let's say again and recall. We have to understand two important principles of physics before we explain the pulmonary mechanics, the inspiration and expiration. The first important principle is the general law general law of flow flow equals to delta p on r delta p represents the change or difference in pressure and r represent the resistance and the second principle of physics we have to understand is the Boyle's law Boyle's law state that when the temperature is constant, 
So the, the, the pressure, sorry, the pressure of the gas is negatively proportioned to the volume of the container. So after this important introduction, We have also to pay attention and recall the anatomical, anatomical structure of the lungs and especially the situation or location of the lungs. You can see here that this figure is about an illustrative, illustrative figure. This figure illustrates the lungs, you can see here, the lungs are represented with what? With red color. And there is what is called the pleura. The pleura is a bilayer membrane, bilayer membrane that envelops the lungs. So each one lung is enveloped or surrounded by the pleural membrane. The pleural membrane consists of two important layers. Here you can see the blue color layer, which is called the visceral pleura. The visceral pleura is a first layer of pleura, which is in direct contact with the lung. And the second layer of pleura, which is called the parietal, the parietal pleura, which is represented here by green color, the parietal pleura, and it's in contact with the chest wall. It is the chest wall. Between these two layers of pleura, there is fluid. So it is called the pleural cavity. The pleural cavity is filled with fluid. But I have magnified, magnified the area between the two membranes of pleura in order to explain an illustration. But in fact, the two layers are in contact and filled with the fluid. So after this important anatomical consideration, we have to pay attention and focus on the pressures surrounding the lungs, the pressures that surround the lung. First of all, we have the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure, the pressure of air that surrounds the human body, the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is taken here for facilitation of what calculations, is taken as zero. And we have another pressure, the atmospheric pressure is the pressure of the air that surrounds our body. Atmospheric pressure. So, first is atmospheric pressure. And it equals to about zero millimeter mercury. And we have another type of pressure is the pressure inside the alveoli. I have drawn an illustrative figure that illustrates the alveoli inside the lungs. So there is also another pressure. It is the pressure of air inside the alveoli. It is called alveolar pressure. So, let's back to the law, the general law of the flow. So, in order for the air, for the air, in order to enter to inside of the lung, in other words, to enter to inside of the alveoli, and to get exit out or outside of the lung, or outside of the alveoli, this air must subjected to the law of flow which is stated as we have said flow equals to delta pressure on resistance 
that type of pressure. So first of all, there must be a difference in the pressure between the atmospheric pressure and the alveolar pressure in order to entrance of the air to the lung or exit of air outside of the lung. We will explain now how the difference is in any pressure, sorry, how the difference in the pressure is being created to permit for what? To permit for entrance of air inside the lung or exit of air outside the lung. After this explanation, and we have demonstrated that we have atmospheric pressure, alveolar pressure, and in addition to that, in addition to that, we have another type of pressure. Another type. It is the intraplural pressure. We have said that the pleura consists of parietal pleura and physical pleura. The space, the parietal cavity, which is filled with the fluid, has its specific, has specific pressure. It is called intraplural pressure, and it equals to about minus four millimeter mercury it is called this pressure is called intraplural pressure intraplural pressure so first of all we have to understand what is the source of that negative pressure inside the pleura or intraplural pressure what 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 has made made sorry what has made this pressure negative what is the source of that pressure and what is the importance of that pressure so let's explain that we have said that the pleura consists of two layers two layers two layers and between them there is a fluid okay so the visceral pleura is in contact as you hear with the lung while in green the parietal pleura is in contact with what in contact with chest wall let's remember together that the lung itself the lung is itself as a tissue has an elastic nature has an elastic nature and the lung itself tends to collapse tends to collapse while the chest wall also has an elastic nature but in nature it tends to what to expand tend to expand so we can imagine together that the lung tends to collapse and the chest wall tends to expand so they we can imagine that they form and different forces in two directions the lungs collapse tend to collapse and the chest wall tends to expand and when this occur there will be pulling forces on the pleural membranes pulling forces on different directions pulling forces this pulling forces on the pleural membranes will create the negative pressure inside the intrapleural cavity. So the source of the negative pressure, which is equal to minus four millimeter mercury, comes from what? Comes from the natural tendency of the lung to collapse and the natural tendency of the chest wall to expand.